coordinate spaces. Yep, you heard it correctly, coordinate spaces, plural. Let's see why there was a need for multiple coordinate spaces in game development. I will cover local space, world space, view space, clip space, screen space. I ran out of fingers. But I'm feeling generous today, so I will also cover tangent space. Alright, without any further ado, let the new game math theory episode commence. First, let's understand what is a coordinate space. The simplest way I can think of is that a coordinate space tells us the address or location of a particular point in 2D or 3D space. A coordinate space will have an origin and different axes based on the dimensions, 2D or 3D. I will talk about 3D, so it will have three axes, X, Y, and Z. Then I have this point with the coordinates 2, 1, 3, which means the point is 2, 1, and 3 units away in X, Y, and Z axis respectively from the origin 0, 0, 0. And now that you know what is a coordinate space, let's talk about world space. Every game engine will have a shared coordinate space which has an origin at the center of the scene or game world and will have x, y and z axis pointing in three directions. This is called world space. Now keep in mind that the axis direction can be different based on different game engines. For example, Unity and Grio has y as up axis while Unreal has z as up axis. Everything you put inside your scene will be relative to world's origin means it will be in world space. Simply put, world space is used to build up your level or scene. Then there is local space. Every mesh or geometry will have an origin or pivot and will have three local axes pointing in x, y and z direction. Now this pivot and axis can be defined by artist in any 3D software. They are local to object, hence it is called local space. Sometimes it is also called object space or model space. It is used to position each vertex of the geometry at appropriate location around the pivot and this local space is per object, meaning it can be different for different objects with or without the rotation. So let's say I have this cube, world space is used to place this pivot at this position, then these vertices are positioned around that pivot using local space. Then much like in real life, in games we see the world through virtual eye or camera. Let's imagine that you are sitting in a moving vehicle, you look outside the window, you will get the feeling you are stationary, everything else around you is moving. Similarly, if I move around in the viewport, my virtual camera stays the same but everything else moved. To handle this, game engines have to compensate for that. They have to move each and every vertex, which is easy enough for simple pan, but if I change the angle, now every object has to be rotated as well, which is difficult in world space and a nightmare in local space. Hence enters the view space. View space has the origin at the camera's location. X, Y and Z axis points toward the camera's local X, Y and Z axis. For this reason, it is also known as camera space. This can be different based on your game engine. For example, in Godot, camera's forward is negative Z, while Unity has positive Z. Now the final output will always be in the screen space. Screen space is a 2D space that generally has the origin at the top left of the screen. And X and Y axis goes up to screen resolution. So let's say I've set up a scene where I have sphere exactly at the center. I've targeted 1080p monitors. Now if game engines take into account view space before rasterization, then for the 1080p monitor, the sphere will be in the dead center. But if I were to run it on 4K display, it would look like this, which is a problem, a big one. So to prevent that, a new coordinate space had been developed. This coordinate space has the origin at the center of the screen. X and Y axis goes from minus one to one like this. Z axis can be different based on the game engine and graphics API. For example, in OpenGL, Z axis goes from minus one to one from camera's near clip plane to far clip plane exponentially and any object which is outside these coordinates range will be clipped, hence it is called clip space. It is sometimes also called projection space because it takes into account camera's frustum. Game engines map every coordinates from view space to clip space before rasterization or final output. So in the previous example, the sphere will sit on 0, 0 in clip space, so it will always be centered on the screen regardless of the resolution. Clip space is designed to work with devices with different resolution, hence it is also called normalized device coordinates. Lastly, there is tangent space, which is a bit different than the rest and mostly used in shaders for lighting purposes. Let's say I have a mesh fragment, 
In tangent space, the origin will be the center of the fragment. X and Y axis generally points in UV's X and Y axis. And Z axis shoots straight out perpendicular to the fragment. Tangent space is per vertex or per fragment depending on shaded pipeline. In simple words, it will be different for each fragment or vertex based on its orientation. Most common example from the top of my head is vectors of the normal maps are stored in tangent space. I've also used tangent space for creating this prismatic card foil effect in Unity. Okay, so that was the overview of coordinate spaces. Keep in mind though that mathematically this topic is a lot bigger and includes a bunch of linear algebra and matrix multiplication. Speaking of matrices, I've covered the overview of matrices in this video. Check it out and I will see you there.